a good skate today. Again, I don't know if he'll be ready for tomorrow, uh, but a step in the right direction. The goal today was to get him a full practice, fully involved, contact, and he did that. So uh, I'll check with our medical staff here. Uh, hopefully we'll have him for tomorrow. so well with this lineup. Yes. It's kind of one of those weird things. Like obviously Lucas Raymond's gonna play, but yes, Lucas will play when healthy. I, I I just we've been like this for two, three weeks now. And credit to some of the guys. Uh Zadina sits out right back in. We will get Bergeron, all intentions getting Bergeron back in. Kubalika sat out and back in. Verana has watched three, four games and got in the lineup. You're playing well. Obviously, there's some rhythm with some of the lines. Um, but we've also mixed up some lines throughout this um, stretch, too. So I think it's part of it. As a staff, just consistent with the message. Uh, there's times we will sit someone out, and the message is clear of why, and it's for accountability. And there's times that it's – you're the odd man out tonight, so that'd probably be that situation. Hopefully, um, if we continue to stay healthy and continue to play well. Derek, isn't though the revolving door thing a good thing for us? Yes, of course it is. Like again, we were sitting here beginning of the year, we couldn't come up with bodies. We had literally five, six um, forwards out. Like, you know, I did the meeting last night, and the guys had a chunk at a Matt Luff goal versus the Rangers. Like, you just think about where we were with all those injuries and uh, where we are now. Of course, it's, this is a good problem to have. That's kind of the hope, what you're hoping. Yeah, I think some natural, 100%, natural, healthy competition is what you're uh, looking for. How do you decide, Newsy, whose turn it's going to be on a particular night? Uh, ultimately, it's on me, but we'll talk as a staff. There's different things that go into it. I know even with Zadina the other day, I, I think I told the press, I do not like sitting him out, but he was the, the guy not in either special teams. So it just made sense uh, with rhythm. Um, so a lot goes into it. Sometimes it's play, sometimes it's accountability. Um, so these are tough decisions that we're happy to have right now. When you have to tell Bergie, who's a younger player, yes. that he's sitting out as opposed to maybe Kubalik, who's a veteran, is it different or do you... can be different circumstances. It's not an easy conversation uh, ever. And uh, I don't want the player to be happy with it. Sometimes some tension, uncomfortable, is, is part of it. Uh, but I think it's each individual is different. Does it match up? Or look, as you've got Tampa and then Ottawa next week. When you look at kind of mapping it out, how much do you look at the opponent, or is it just looking at the mirror? No, 100% about us. And I think we've hit a stride a little bit and had some consistency of our game lately because it's been about us and our process. So obviously it's opponent-driven sometimes, but usually big picture is just about us. What's it like as a coach in this time I mean, where you see last night, I, mean, I don't know how long you guys plan for it, but we see the Rangers pull two guys for roster management stuff, and we see team and moving things around. Just as a coach this time of year when it comes to planning for things, what's, what's that like? It's, it's, it can be, it's a reality. It, it can be tough. Um, I mean, it's just I think it's the business side of it. I mean, we, we're, we're in the middle of it ourselves. Um, you know, it, you guys are doing your job. There's names getting thrown around. Um, it's all part of it. But... I think we do a pretty good job of just coaching the team. We can, I've brought this up in the past. This is exactly why you have the manager coach layer. Um, we don't talk about it. We go about our business. Everyone knows it's the invisible hand, if you will, and it's out there, but we just go about our business. Can you and Steve talk about that stuff? I mean, how much, when you guys are rolling like this, how much is that a factor of like, I mean, if you're already having a hard time finding people to sit, but it's so good for the ones to come in or whatever would happen. Like how much is that a part of those conversations? Yeah, a little bit. It's not a ton. I, I, I lean on Steve a lot because he's, he's Steve. He's been around the league for a long time, but 
I mean, we rarely talk big picture stuff, which is good. And that's Steve's job, and my job is to coach the team. And does it cross over? Of course it does. But there's a good line there that I appreciate. How much has Sherrod helped you guys kind of find this defensive structure that you've seen to find here? <laughs> Great question, because he's one of those guys that's just – He's really committed to the defensive side of the game, and that's that's a big part of um, a team trying to grow. Um, you know, I different, but I you know one of the guys that I really enjoyed coaching my career was Ryan McDonough, and why I say that is Ryan could care less how many goals we put in the net. All he cared about was keeping it out, and you just, you need those type of guys. And Ben's similar like that. Do, do his underlying numbers tell you something different than your eyes do sometimes? <laughs> like, are there elements of his game that aren't captured by me? One hundred percent. We're not the heaviest team. We're not the most physical team. Um, he brings those elements. Um, he eats pucks. There's times he'll make a big hit that lifts our group. Um, I mean. Look at the Minnesota game. We were physically being outmatched a little bit, and he fought Reeves because that was the right thing to do. I mean, not many guys are going to do that. And that went a long way for this group that day and going forward, too. So great question because absolutely 100%. He brings a ton that you don't see in numbers in black and white. What, what is the line and where that falls in? When it comes to the fight you see the last night, a couple of things you guys get into, and then you just mentioned obviously the Chirac trees. I just think it's. it's you know, we talk about just team toughness, you know, sticking up for teammates. It's all I care about is sticking up for teammates, and that can look different ways. It can look like Ben Chirac when he stuck up for his teammates with Ryan Reeves. It could look like last night. A D man, there are players literally just pounding. Rass, cross check, cross check, cross check. It's the dean of all people goes to his aid. Just stick up for teammates, and it can look different in different ways. We talk about it all the time, <coughs> and that's all I care about, and we do as a staff. You know, we hear all the time about this is a good thing for the Red Wings, for young players to be in a playoff race. Um, do you look at the physical play is only going to be ramped up as these games are more yes. important? So are you looking towards... Are you happy with your team's response? Or do you know yes. they may have to up it up a little Of course, bit? of course. That's all part of playing meaningful games this time of year. These look different. Um, we were a little tight last night sometimes. That's a little inexperience. I would like to, as a group, get better as we keep playing these games. Um, games go in different directions, physically, pace, of course. Um, you just have to answer the bell in different ways. and. You know, last night was one of them where ended up being physical towards the end of the game. You're going into a three and four, and yes. then a, there's a Wednesday, and then another three and four. How do you kind of guard against not, you know, keeping energy up? And yeah, that's a great question. Um, I practice today a little bit shorter. Uh, I think substance is going to be very important going forward because this time of year, you know, everyone's got to. Uh, a really tough schedule, volume of games. Uh, ours changed a little bit with adding the back-to-back -back with Ottawa. <coughs> so it's all part of it. It's all part of managing it. It's very important to have energy levels in games. So that'll be a challenge for us. Steve brought guys like Sherratt, Marlon, <coughs> and uh, Andrew Kopp here uh, for what they've got experience-wise this time of the year. And Andrew was saying he had some pointed conversations with guys on the bench yes. last night uh, regarding in-game play. Just from your perspective, those guys that he brought here for those reasons, how, how does their role change right now? How do you lean on them, or what are your expectations from them, lean on them right a, now? A ton. They care a ton, but they've also come from some winning situations. They see what winning looks like. They see what winning takes. And, you know, I say all the time, it's going to look uncomfortable sometimes. There's going to be conflict in it, but it's healthy. And the guys have bought into it, and then we've got – a very healthy room because of it right now. In, in your coaching career, I'm curious, because when you come out and you're able to right away start diagnosing here and, and why and how things happen, 
in your career, when you look back, was there a spot where early in your career you won or lost? And like, what? For, I'm just curious, as your evolution as a coach? Right? Yeah. After a game ends. That's a great question. Too deep into it, but I've always, <clears throat> I, I, I was lucky early in my coaching career, being a lifetime coach, literally. 10 days after I finished playing college hockey, I started my coaching career. I was introduced to culture over structure early on. And I've grown in those areas. Uh, I've studied those areas. It's never perfect. It looks differently. But ultimately, <clears throat> I've been fortunate to be around a lot of winning. <clears throat> and that's not on me. I've just been blessed with great players, great teams. Um, as my career kept going like that, I was able to run into really good organizations that were set up in a good situation. And you see what it looks like. Um, and you just, you grow from that. And, you know, people love experience in different ways. I mean, people always, I lean it. When someone wins, you study them, what they're doing. And I'm no different in any sport. Uh, so I just... I think I've been fortunate to run some impressive people in some really good situations that had really strong cultures that I could grow off. Derek, you mentioned the healthy room right now. We've always heard that you can't get too high, you can't get too low, especially at this point. But some of the guys in that room have experienced some lows at this yes. time of year in the past couple of seasons. Um, you let them ride that high? How do you manage? No, we that? try to be even keeled. Even, I think, the messaging you know, immediately, like last night's perfect example, <clears throat> You know, I go in there, and obviously everyone's very excited, but we immediately talk about some things we may have not handled very well. That's what the morning meeting practice is today, holes in our game. You know, uh, you're, you're constantly trying to get better and grow from it, but I think part of maturing as a group is staying even-keeled through situations. Obviously, we're on a high right now, but I give this group credit. You guys see it. There's been some tough press conferences in here on some tough losses and this group stayed very even keel positive we talk about judging ourselves on process over result and you see it all the time uh, one night and I referenced this what got me really excited it was easy to reference some of those games where we played well and you guys saw that where we just didn't score, we didn't win special teams. We, we left there, played really well, but lost. We've had a couple games now where we did not play very well. I go back to the seven-goal game we had against Winnipeg, and it was really refreshing for the guys to stand up here and understand we didn't play very well, but still got a result. So I think that's just part of growth, maturing. We're still a young group in there, but uh, staying even keeled through ups and downs is very important. How often do you watch the guys here? Not often. Sometimes, oh, I'm, it's, I'm curious because just yeah. you know, they're. It's sometimes it's individual based. Sometimes, w what the message is. I think it's just a reality of what is going on. And again, sometimes guys are guarded. You know, we talk about what happens in the room stays in the room, but you can get a feel of where some guys are and, and where the group is. Uh, I think it's just a reality. It's just diff just a different tool. As, as much as you try to avoid. <laughs> quiet playoff talk back in November. At what point did you have no choice but to embrace Well, it? I think we're there. I mean, the guys, um, obviously, I mean, this is the time. And, but we're still going to be within our process. I, I brought this up the other day. Um, we had that five-game losing streak, and we didn't play very well in Seattle. And I was getting those playoff questions. And really, the present moment is we coming off a poor performance and see how we want to improve on that we did that um, we beat Washington on an okay performance we want to be better in some areas we did that last night and last night was good not great and you know today was correction day um, it's just this group any group you stay in the moment you have to you start talking outcome it's it's not healthy Derek, uh, this might be a little too early to ask you this question, but Steve built the Lightning, and he's now building the Red Wings. Do you are you beginning to see? And I know the Red Wings are not the Lightning. Do you are you beginning to see some similarities between these two teams? Um, I think the biggest thing, the only, the only similarity I'm seeing is the manager's patience. 
which is that's real and in Tampa I don't think people realize how much went into that and how patient obviously an unbelievable job by amateur scouting unbelievable job by pro scouting and not going you get a little bit lucky too uh, you do your work but you get some luck in there and the one similarity I see between the two is patience because this does take a really long time and we're, we're still in the middle of it. Thanks, guys.